Good to go. Perfect. Okay, guys. So once again, thank you so very much for, for joining us today. Uh, super excited, uh, like I said, to, to go through this topic. I feel like I have a lot to share, and I know you guys have a lot to share as well, so I'm very much looking forward to hearing what everybody has to say, uh, say about it. So let's dive right in. So here's our uh, agenda for today. So we've introduced ourselves. Thank you for doing that. And again, thank you guys for joining me today. Very much appreciate it. Uh, we're going to deep dive into meal planning. We're going to talk about how to utilize meal planning, planning to find our mojo in the kitchen again or with food and uh, to, of course, meet our, our macro needs. So we've all probably, we might have had different types of surgeries or we might have gotten different information from our surgeon. So we just need to make sure that we're always keeping that in mind when we're talking about meal planning. Uh, and then uh, we're going to talk about online clothes shopping because it's almost, well, all the stores here in Washington are closed. So the only way that we can buy new clothes is online. And for us who have recently been through surgery, we need new clothes because none of our old clothes fit. So we're just going to talk about how do we shop for our new bodies and how can we shop with confidence. Uh, skincare was another thing that we wanted to talk about. And that's Super important, it's the largest organ in our body. So how do we nourish it and how do we take care of it? Uh, and then we're just gonna open up the forum to any questions or concerns that you guys wanna ask the community and then we'll wrap up as we always do. Uh, so I always share my vision uh, with everybody just so you guys know where I'm coming from. My goal is to destigmatize weight loss surgery. Uh, I wanna grow a community for and of bariatric patients and their supporters so that we can learn and grow from each other. I think we're the best teachers uh, and we're the best learners when we do so with each other. Uh, and then I just wanna share things and ideas and experiences that have added value to my life. So that's the, the whole gist of why I'm, why I'm doing this. Uh, ground rules. I always wanna make sure that we're all on the same page. Please always assume best intent. Uh, what we share in this group remains confidential. Uh, no sales, nobody's here to sell anything. We're just here to, to learn and grow from each other. Uh, and then uh, nothing inappropriate. So if I see anything going on in the background, I'll kick you out of the group. Uh, you guys know I swear all the time, and I work really hard not to do that in these types of forums, but uh, an F-bomb or two might come out, and I apologize in advance. And I'm not going to be offended if an F-bomb slips out of your mouth either. <laughs> Sometimes it's just required. Just going to leave it at that. <laughs> okay, you guys ready? Let's, let's dive in. Just saying. No planning. Uh, the plan. So after surgery, so the, my first month after surgery, I really call it my dying time. It was awful. I was in a lot of pain, more pain than I've ever been in in my life. And I have a pretty high pain tolerance. I've done some damage to my physical body before, but nothing, nothing like post-surgery. So I was in a lot of pain. And then um, I was abruptly confronted with just how dependent on food I was. It, was. it was a very dark time for me. It was very depressing. I was very blue, which is not normally my personality. Uh, and it was, it, what compounded it, I think, was that not only could I not turn to food, but then it very much became, what's the point? Why do I even, why am I worrying about food? Why am I buying it? Why am I thinking about it? Why am I prepping it? It's, it's lost all of its meaning basically. And that's really hard when it was such a huge, joyful part of my life before. Uh, so it took me uh, some months to kind of get out of that stage and to re-engage with food. Uh, and I have found that I enjoy food now more than I ever did before, which is very odd. I had this very enlightening moment um, when I was actually talking with a cookbook author uh, so I, I'll share the, I'm going to share this later, but I'll just, I'll just tell you for some reason, I don't know why. Oh, Alicia, somebody who normally joins us, um, tagged me in a post, random post, because I love dishes. Anyways, she tagged me in a post by this cookbook author, her name is Terry Turner. She wrote this book called No Crumbs Left. She tagged me in a post, it was a giveaway. I'd never heard of her before in, the, in her entire life. I went through her Instagram feed, something sparked it, and I was like, all right, well, whatever, I'm just gonna order the cookbook. And her cookbook absolutely Pandora boxed me back out of my funk. And this was really maybe only like two or three months ago. We were living in this new house, but um, j just brand new to it. And it's something about a recipe in this book brought me out of my funk and it really helped me understand oh okay food is nutrition not 
just fill in the blank, right? So that kind of that first bullet there. But we do have to eat, right? So food is not uh, entertainment. Food is not solace. Food is not a drug. Food is not, you know, what we turn to. Food is simply nutrition. And for us to be successful after our surgeries, we really truly have to treat it as nutrition because it's the only way that we're going to survive. We have to get in those macros. We have to get in those vitamins. We have to get in those nutrients. And if we don't, we're gonna die early. We're gonna put our weight back on and we're gonna be right, right back to the place where, where we started before surgery. So we really do have to think of food as nutrition, but we have to eat. So it's this very fine balance between how do I, how do I go back to something that got me in trouble in the first place without going back into trouble? So it's a bit of a conundrum. Uh, so what I found was a huge help for me is I asked my husband, my family, my friends, I just said, I need a break from food. I don't want to cook it. I don't want to buy it. I don't want to think about it. I just want to go into my fridge. I'm going to grab a protein shake or I'm going to have a protein bar and that's it. I don't want to come hang out with you with food. I don't want to go out to dinner. I just need a break. And I was so thankful that I did that for myself because it allowed me just to step away from it and not think about it. I obsessed for food for 38 years in my life and I needed a break. And the surgery, for some reason, helped me create this mental break between food and, and my emotions. And it was very easy for me to just go, oh, food is nutrition. For some reason, surgery helped me make that connection. Thank goodness, right? One of the things that surgery did that I had no idea would actually do. Uh, so I asked to take this break and it was the best thing that I think I could have ever done for myself. And thank God my friends and family obliged. Uh, so if you are finding similarities in your situation, it's okay to take a break from food. It's okay to pass that baton to somebody else in your world. And if you don't have somebody else in your world to pass it to, it's okay to just do what feels best to you. And if that is to only drink protein shakes and protein bars right now, go for it. You have my absolute permission. It's not a lifelong sustaining way to live life and interact with food, but it's probably what you need to do in the moment. And that is totally fine. Uh, what I realized once I moved into my new house is that enjoyment, I can still get some enjoyment from food, but it's not eating the food that's giving me enjoyment. And that's the key for me. My issue was I got too much enjoyment out of consuming the food. That was dangerous for me. My enjoyment from food now comes really with the presentation and the crafting of it. And that sounds so bizarre. I get so much joy when I set a table just for my husband and I, or when I make something look beautiful on a table. There's no food on the plate, but that place setting looks spectacular. Or when I master this one recipe, I get so much joy out of that. And I get a lot of joy out of people enjoying the food that I cook. So enjoyment from food can come from all kinds of different places that aren't really related to actually eating the food. So planning it, researching it, preparing, presenting, creating, experimenting, photographing, making it for gifts for others. All of these are ways that you can get enjoyment out of food. And I, I believe it is important that you find some enjoyment with food again, or you get to a place where you're enjoying an aspect of it because for us to be healthy in the long term, we have to eat food. And the most nutritious food that we can provide for ourselves are the whole food things that we prepare ourselves, right? It's that, that whole food, it's not the fast food, it's not the pre-made shakes, it's not the pre-made bars. Those are absolutely essential for us to get in those protein levels. But if that's all that we're eating, that's not healthy. That's not sustainable in the long term. That's chemicals, that's fillers, that's that's just stuff that's not good for uh, for us. It's good for the quick, but it's not good good for the long term. So we have to get to a, pl a place where we can focus on whole food and not that fast fast food that that we've kind of become accustomed to. Um, and when we're thinking about meal planning, we always have to think about our macro needs first. So even if we're planning for prepping and planning for family, if it's just us, if it's a husband, if it's an extended group, whatever. When you are planning, 
or if you are in, are in a team planning, you have to make sure that your macro needs are gonna be met first. So I always go, right, protein, nutrients, water. That's, that's kind of, those are my three big ones. So whatever I happen to be fixing or whatever we were thinking of, we always start with protein. Is that going to give me enough protein in that small meal that I'm going to consume uh, that will help fill out my day in terms of the macro? Okay. If we do that, everything else will fall into place. And I think there really is a planning tool or planning system that will work for you in any type of situation that you're in. So it's just my husband and I. So for us, we, we do it a different way. Uh, you might have a family. You're going to do yours uh, family way. You might be uh, single. There's going to be a way that's good for you, that works for you, that gets in your macro needs, that helps you find some joy in food, and then keeps you consistent. Uh, and that's I think really the the key here. So under the resource tab, uh, there's some, uh, I found a really interesting graphic that post bariatric meal planning tool. It's just kind of like a, uh, a calendar of sorts for the week, but it just really helps give you some like reminders of, oh, you got to pack protein here. You got to pack protein here. You really need to think about eating this at that time. That was, a, I saw that, I thought that was really, really cool. Uh, bariatric recipes and the bariatric solution recipe ideas just some really great website resources that I found that have excellent pictures that accompany the recipes. I am a huge picture person when it comes to recipes. I need to know what that looks like. Cause if I make it the first time, I guarantee you it's not gonna look like what it should look like. So there's a picture, at least I, like, <laughs> at least I can verify that I'm maybe on the right, right track. Um, I have some table setting ideas. So I know that not everybody is crazy like me and has 15 different dish sets and serveware and crystal and. I think I have three flatware sets. I'm insane. And I know that I'm insane. But the reason that I would draw your attention to slideshows like this, like the table setting ideas, don't look at it. Don't look at a picture and go, I don't have any of that. Look at a picture and say, oh, I like that look, or that's an interesting idea. Or I would have never have thought to put flowers in a wine glass or whatever. If you look at a picture from that perspective, you're going to focus on oh, what could I do? Or you're going to focus on, oh, that's beautiful. Could I recreate that? Or how could I recreate that? Your brain comes at it from a different perspective that's going to be more problem solving than more negative, if that makes sense. So I just encourage you to, to, to look at the pictures that are out there and just see what sparks your, your joy or what sparks your interest or what looks appealing to you. And then uh, think about what you already have in your home and play around, do some experimenting, just have, have fun. It, nobody's going to see it. It's just for you. Go for it. I absolutely encourage you to go for it. And then the other two things that I have on this list are just high protein food lists and then high protein, low carb nuts and seeds. That nuts and seeds have been my go-to recently. I think it's made a really big help. You get a lot of bang. Uh, for little carb, it, just awesome. So uh, this link, the link to this agenda is actually in my Instagram bio, and it will take you right to the slide and makes all of these links live. So I absolutely recommend that you go back and, and revisit this because uh, I try to pack this with, with a lot of good ideas. Um, so any questions about this so far or any comments about this so far? Yes. Okay. I was wondering if um, when you have put a table setting out for you and your husband, on your setting, do you tend to put smaller plates and smaller utensils? I do. That's a super good question. So when it's just my husband and I, I will set up the exact same layout, I guess. But I always dish myself on a salad plate. And I always dish my husband on just whatever the regular dinner plate is. And this, the flatware um, sets that I have, uh, it's like the formal setting. So it's like the big spoon, the big fork, and then like the, you know, little spoons, little fork. So I serve myself with the little utensils and I serve my husband with the, the larger utensils. If I'm uh, setting a table for a party, for a, uh, you know, like a dinner guest party, then I will set my place setting the exact same as everybody else's because it drives me a little bit nuts to have something even slightly um, not uniform. Uh, but yeah, super good question. 
And the other thing that's fun too is that, um, so a lot of my dish sets, I have dinner and salad plates that are in one, you know, and you can kind of layer them and it makes a different look. Uh, and I do that often just for my husband and I too. And if I'm in that type of mood, then I will use a big dinner plate, you know, I'll set it the same, but then I always dish myself up just on a, you know, on a, on a little plate. If we're having soup, um, I do have lots of different sizes of bowls. So I'll tend to serve myself a smaller bowl. Um, and then, yeah, some might not, but yeah, super good question. I would have never thought about that. See, this is why we do this. <laughs> okay. Any other questions? I have a lot more to talk about when it comes to meal planning, so I don't want to rush you guys, but okay. So this is how I do it. So Grady and I, for the week, we, um, we have like a family meeting. So we kind of sit down, we talk about what do we want to eat that week? What, um, what things do we have in our pantry uh, or in our uh, fridge? What sounds good to us at the moment? And then we also kind of talk about our finances. We talk about like things that we have coming up in our family, really just kind of have like a legit family meeting, even though it's just the two of us. And sometimes Stella, she joins us because you know, she has to say. Uh, so when we do this kind of like check-in, uh, we always say like, well, what do you feel like? Well, what do you feel like? Or um, Grady likes to look for new recipes. And a lot of times he finds really great ones and they'll say, oh, I found this recipe and I want to try this. Awesome. So then we literally, write it in our planner. And the reason that I like doing it this way is that, let me flip to April. So I also write in like things that we have going on that are not food related. So this month I'm obviously, I'm on spring break, woohoo, which is fantastic. Uh, Easter is next Sunday. If we weren't in COVID lockdown, we would have a ton of birthdays. So we would be away from our house a lot. So on those days, maybe we wouldn't even plan a meal or I would plan a lighter meal. So it's nice to be able to see like what you're actually doing in your life and then the food that matches that activity. So that's been a really big help for, uh, help for us. Uh, and then the other thing that we will do during this family meeting, and sometimes it is during dinner, is we'll literally go and grab our cookbooks off the shelf. And as we're eating, uh, we'll thumb through the cookbooks. And when we find something that's appealing to us, right? We're like, oh, that looks, that looks good, right? Like, what do you think about that? We look through the ingredient list. Oh yeah, we, we actually have most of that or we have all of that. Okay, perfect. So then I write it down in my planner. And then I also write down the name of the cookbook. So let's see if I can zoom in on this, maybe. I write down the name of the cookbook and the page number. And the reason I do that is that if for some reason my day gets thrown off and let's say it was my time, turn to cook that meal, I can go to Grady and I can say, hey, like I'm really behind on my day or something came up, you know, can you make dinner tonight? Awesome. Yeah. Okay. It's in this cookbook and it's on this page number. So he already knows right in the book where to go to find that recipe. It's been a really big help. The other thing that we've done too, is that if we find a recipe and we print it out, I will put it right in here. So I'll just like paper clip it to the page so that it doesn't get lost. Uh, and that just kind of becomes like a nice repository as you continue to grow like your, your recipe arsenal and, and things like that. Uh, if we make something and we don't like it, I throw the recipe away or I will literally put a sticky note in a book, in our my cookbook and it says, not good, don't make again. Or you guys can see, like I'll put a sticky note in my book or I'll write on the, the thing that we printed out. This was awesome, made it this way do this again, right? So I'll write notes kind of right, we'll, we will take notes right on the recipe. And then if we enjoy it, uh, we star it or we'll highlight it so that we know that it was something that we liked. So if we're running low on ideas, I can flip back to previous months and I can go, oh, we really enjoyed that cashew chicken and rice. Oh, let's do that again. So we don't have to think too long and hard about it if we don't want to. I can already go back to things that we've done before in the past that we really enjoyed. And I already know where the recipe is because it's written down or it's here in the book. It's just a very simple, efficient way for us uh, to, to meal plan. Uh, so right on my slide, I just say, pull your cookbooks off the shelf, Google something that sounds good or reach out to your friends or social media for inspiration. Uh, my mom and my grandma are excellent cooks. 
uh, if I ever get into a funk uh, and I just don't know what to do, I always call my grandma and I say, grandma, oh my gosh, I don't know what to make for dinner. And then she talks for five hours and sends me 8,000 recipes. And then I try one. So uh, I absolutely recommend that you branch out a little bit. And even if you're craving something for your, from your past, go look for a healthier version of something from your past. That might be a really great way to also spark some interest in creating food again or finding your healthy, healthier ways to make old versions of things that you used to enjoy. Uh, and like I said, we, I plan using a, a calendar. This has been our tried and true method. It's working. The, the longer that we do it, the more efficient it has become for us. Uh, and it's nice to have one thing that we both go, go to. There's not like 8 million different places for things. This is it. This is our this is our everything. So it's worked out very, very well. Uh, so on the daily for, for myself, I have some go-to breakfasts and lunches that I always keep stocked and ready. So you guys know I'm a huge overnight oats fan uh, and I found kind of a low carb way to do that. And it's basically hemp seeds and chia seeds, which is awesome. Uh, yogurt and granola is another go-to for me. Uh, fruit and coffee smoothies. What I'm drinking right now is a high protein coffee smoothie. And all it is is the Vega coffee protein powder from uh, Costco, uh, cold brew coffee, a little bit of coffee creamer, and some ice. And I, this is like my eighth day, I think, drinking this. And I absolutely love it. It's a go-to for me. I make this Mediterranean salad all the time. You guys have maybe seen it on my Instagram feed. It's basically tofu, fake cheese, uh, kalamata olives, cucumbers, tomatoes, uh, a high protein like dip and then I do seeds on top to help bust up my protein. I make that all the time and I absolutely love it. Uh, I've been doing a lot of nuts, nuts and seeds lately and then uh, cheese. I keep string cheese, different types of cheese around. I know it's not vegan but sometimes that's just what I need. So I have go-to things that I always keep stocked that I know that I enjoy uh, and that way I'm not, my brain doesn't go to a place that I don't want it to go, which is, oh, I really want this, but this is not nutritious. So if I've already made my overnight oats, or if I already have yogurt in the fridge, or if I already have my ingredients for my Mediterranean salad, I'm just going to make it. Uh, so I would recommend, think about go-to breakfast and lunches that you can keep always in your house that are just easy for you. And this maybe might be a great place where you're like, hey, my go-to is a protein shake or my go-to is a protein bar. Awesome. That also works as well. I have a whole bin filled with, with protein stuff. Uh, Diana, I can see your hand raised. Go for it. Oh, can you hear me, Diana? Oh, sorry. I didn't have my... Yep. I was just going to say, okay. I like the cup that you're drinking out of because the more attractive of a drinking cup, the more desirable, desirable it is for enjoying drinks. And I also want to compliment on the, the big calendar that you have and the, the journal you have of what you and your husband are using because it's a joint way to help in the way you eat and you're being supportive of each other but because you're the one who initially went through the sleeve surgery it's also helping you in a big way and it's more of a support team thing and um with um with you having that calendar do you also have a place where you might briefly put down what you found satisfying about the meal whether it was texture color something more of in tune to your own feelings um i do not but that's a really good idea. Uh, the reason that I enjoy this um, this type of planner so much, so not only does it have the monthly layout, but it also has like um, spaces for daily stuff. That would be a fantastic place that you could record those observations for yourself. Yeah, and it would be built in right here. And again, right, it's just one place that you're going when you want to reflect on a meal, that would be a super great place to do that. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, for me, Grady and I have a system. We, it started years ago when we were first married, I would make like these meals and then it's like, okay, what do you think? And he would either be like, oh, it's a keeper or it's not a keeper. 
and it had nothing to do with my skill as a cook, which my skills are horrible. Uh, it just really had something to do with, I enjoyed the taste of that or that was a good meal or that was not a good meal. So no judgment. I have to really check myself. He tells me that sometimes it makes me angry because you put a lot of time and effort into making food sometimes, but it has nothing to do with me. It has everything to do with just other people's taste. So if we both veto a recipe, or really, I mean, at this point, if he vetoes a recipe and I'm, eh, I won't make it again. If he absolutely loves it and I absolutely hate it, then we might have a, then that might be one of those things of like, okay, well, you're going to make that meal. I'll eat it, but you're going to make it. Uh, but very great idea. Super good idea about recording that. I mean, I really, I, I think I bought this at like Target. Yeah, it's the Simplified Planner. And I saw them at Amazon. I actually have it linked uh, a little bit later on. But yeah, very good idea. The other thing too, not when, since Grady's been home quarantined, uh, this worked out really well because each day we just said like, here's what we need to get done. And then we could cross them off. It just, it made it so much easier because you just have one place to go. Instead of having a, a planner for meals and a planner for budgeting and a to-do list and this and that. Nope, we just have this and it works out well. Um, the other thing I was going to suggest about meal planning is that make your meals ahead, even if you're staying at home. Because the, the less you have to think about something, the more habit and routine it's going to be that you are going to go to, to food that you've already prepared, that you know is healthy, that is, that is meeting your macro needs. So I absolutely recommend pre-making things, even if you're going to be home for the entire day or the entire week. Uh, I would also encourage you to invest in small containers for your portions, like really small containers. You know, the Gladware, Pyrex, all those teeny tiny things that look like they wouldn't fit very much are actually our serving sizes now. So I highly recommend that you find some containers that work well for you and that's how you portion out your snacks or, or part of your meals. Uh, I tend to like really small, those four ounce mason jars, for some reason those those were just appealing to me and, and they work well for me, but there's tons of options out there. I know a lot of people like will make their meals in bento boxes. Super great idea as well. There's tons of those on Amazon. Um, I have been using my food scale a ton in the last couple months. It's great. I love it. Uh, I use it all the time, but it's also a really great way to really get specific with the portions. A lot of times uh, portions are in ounces or grams. And the only way that you kind of know that is if you measure it out. So I always recommend uh, investing in a, in a good food scale. Uh, and if there's something that you love and you won't go crazy on it, then figure out how it fits within your budget, if that makes sense. I absolutely love Cadbury eggs. I know, I'm a freak. Uh, and they're only here in the springtime. I'm not going to deny myself one, uh, but I buy the mini versions and I have a mini version and then I track it. <laughs> I don't do it every day, but sometimes you just have to do that. So as long as I know that I've gotten in all the rest of my macros for the day, I'm going to allow myself to indulge in that. And that's good for me. I'm not going crazy and I'm tracking it. So I, I've owned that. Uh, any questions about uh, this slide, uh, how I do it for the week and how I do it every day? Do you guys do things every week or every day that have been a help to you or that have worked well for your family or your situation? Um, I, um, go ahead. Oh, I'll try to make this quick. I um, go through just telling myself through this isolation and the eating issues that anything in the past that was so difficult and I made it through it, that this is just a walk in the park. That's it. Agreed. Kelly, go for it. Yeah, so I feel like I can talk a lot about this topic for a really long time. Like you, everything you said is really, really great. So I just want to echo that. Um, I've been involved uh, with, with food internally and externally for a really long time. Um, my family, my, I mean, I grew up as a child, my mom owned a restaurant, like I've been around food my whole life. And um, even culturally, I'm Greek and Italian. So I grew up with a family that celebrated food, we would have meetings with food to plan out celebrations for food, like it was my whole life, um, just ingrained in everything. And so I have, I have a couple comments I'll just share. If anyone, um, you know, has come from that in their background, 
I have really had to, yeah, yeah. Um, I had to have very direct conversations with my family about this, that food was no longer going to be used as a source of celebration or emotional connection, period. Um, and I'll be candid since we're sharing and being vulnerable, like my mom, part of her like love language is to um, gift and, and love people through food. Hence, she had a restaurant the way I grew up and I was rewarded with food. It was good job. Let's go celebrate with a treat. Here's out to dinner, going out to dinner for birthdays. I mean, it has been my whole life. And I have had to absolutely have direct conversations that it was no longer going to serve me and that we would have to come up with other ways. And I have to still remind her, this has been for a while now when it's okay, let's, you know, and now I know we're all quarantined, but even before, if it was, Hey, let's go celebrate something. It would be, hey, let's go celebrate and have an iced tea somewhere, or let's go to the movies, or let's go to that little vintage market and look at uh, collectibles. Not buy, not not repurpose the habit, but just do something different that didn't involve food. And even with friends of mine that are, you know, I'm I'm a foodie. Like we're food. Like it's it's a cultural thing, even mainstream now more than anything. You know, there's Food Network and Food TV and Food magazines and uh, Restaurant Week, and it is in everything now more than ever ever before. And even with friends, like going out for happy hours or going out to dinner, I I for a while. I mean, now I have control, but for a long time had to say, I'm sorry, I'm not able to make it, or I won't be joining you. Or what about if we meet up at the park afterwards and go for a walk? Or how about we meet up for early morning, um, you know, Saturday, Saturday morning hike um, and really redirect those activities. And, and uh, so I just encourage that for, for one. So the cultural thing of food, I wanted to address that. But even within my own family, we used to have with my husband, you know, never cook on Fridays. It was always going out to eat. On Saturdays, we'd go out to breakfast. Saturday night was date night. Like this was a part of our culture for a really long time, even as a family and getting really real to say, I'm not doing this anymore. And um, meal planning and menu planning, all these things are so, so on point, but it, it really is just redirecting and looking at things with a new lens. Um, and I still, I still face that with my husband. He still wants to go out to dinner and, and we've been out to dinner. It's not that we haven't, um, but I'll order the appetizer and just eat half of it, or I'll order a meal and just tell them before they even bring it to box half. And then even still I'll pick at my plate. Um, so that way he still gets it, but I have to be really in tune or else it's really easy to blow it. Like just really in tune with what I'm ordering. We'll go to a great place and I'll, I'll see something I would have ordered before and really want that. And it's so tempting, but it is like fighting that to go, nope, that does not serve me. You have to just be so clear and laser focused, at least for me, when I go to a restaurant with somebody now, even still to, um, to really be around that. I know I'm talking about a lot of different things, just you've sparked up a lot here on this, on this topic, but at home with regards to, um, food, everything you said is great. Planning is great. Here's something I learned from you though, from last week, I want to just share with everybody. Um, so you talked about putting in your food tracker to make sure you hit your macros. Um, I have struggled actually hitting my macros for a while. Um, and now that we're quarantined and I'm working from home, I'm actually setting reminders in my phone, in my calendar um, to drink water. Okay, time to drink my protein shake, time to eat my you know, cottage cheese, time to whatever. And I'm actually doing that when I'm planning ahead to make sure I hit my macros the day before or two days before with my meals, I'm going in and putting in calendar reminders by the hour 
for what I'm supposed to do. And I'm hitting it. I'm hitting it. And after having a stall for a couple of weeks, I actually dropped four pounds this past week. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Because I was Great not job. hitting, I was not hitting my protein goal numbers at all until with what you shared. So I wanted to give you some um, kudos and love and gratitude for what you shared last week and maybe even highlighting that again for those that weren't on. All right. And now I'm talking too much. So thank you. <laughs> Oh, Kelly, that is freaking awesome. I'm so happy for you. That is, that's fantastic. And it, isn't it shocking? Like, I, I always think I'm, I, oh, I'm getting in my macros. No, until you actually track it. Mm -mm, no, you are not getting in your macros. And it is amazing to me. If you don't get protein, water, if you don't get those two things in really in your vitamins, you're not going to lose weight your body's going to hang on to absolutely everything. So you have to track it and you have to be as diligent as you are being if you want to get it in. Otherwise your day gets away from you and then you just think, oh, I got it in. No, you got like 20 grams of protein. In. <laughs> yes. Oh, I'm so happy for you. Good job. And you absolutely, you hit the nail on the head. It is not easy for anybody. I think any, all of us in this, in this space right now know it it is so exhausting to be healthy and to do it right it just takes so much energy and so much effort and uh, there there are days that you just don't have it in you but if you want to be successful if you want to be healthy and if you want to drop the weight that's what you have to do you just have to make it a priority and I so appreciate you sharing your, that cultural background. I absolutely, I empathize. I, I'm with you a thousand percent on that. I too had to have very specific conversations with people. Uh, my mom and my grandma, my whole family really shows love through food. And I had to tell them, look, it's killing me. And I don't always have the strength to say no. So I need your help in not killing myself. And we need to do things that are not food related and in fact on my blog i've got a whole like tab page dedicated to i think it's called anything but food and it's just all of these ideas for things that we can do with other people that are not food related right so when somebody says let's meet for dinner i can go through that list and go actually i would love to meet for a walk or i need to go to a bookstore or there's this talk i want to go see or i want to go to yoga or whatever Something that's not related to food because I still want to be social. I still want to engage with you, but food is going to kill me. So can we do it uh, a different way? And it's really hard to have those conversations for a lot of us because food is how we show love. And it's the only way that our family wants to show love. And for me, that's deadly. And I think for a lot of us, that's also deadly. So thank you for sharing that. Oh my gosh, we could have a whole, we could have a whole conversation just on that. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Well, I'm going to keep plugging away. We're, we're making good progress that uh, once again, we, we can go on forever because we're just so in tune to learning from everybody else. So thank you. Uh, here's a picture of one of the tablescapes that I set for a dinner at Christmas time. So I am that person that has fancy name cards for uh, all this kind of stuff. So that's some of my, my fancy China. Uh, so here's my ideas for you for getting your mojo back with food. If if this is what you're struggling with. Bust out your fancy dinnerware and serveware for everyday use. So go through your cupboards, take away all of the regular stuff that you use, put it away and replace it with your fancy stuff. Use your fancy stuff. You don't have to use it just for celebrations. Use it for every day. Cloth and napkins make a huge difference. And if you have crystal, like fancy cut crystal that is sitting in your house and you do not use it, it will shatter eventually. Cut crystal has to be used to be sustained. Take away your everyday drinkware and replace it with your fancy crystal and use that. I mean, if you have little kids, maybe you don't want to do that, but you know, they also have to learn how to, you know, fine dine. So anyways, that's my suggestion. Every month I cycle my dishes out every single month. Uh, so this month, even though it's spring, I've got, I bought fabulous new matte black dishes and I love them and that is my dish pattern for this month so I cycle stuff out I recommend you do the same set a table or have your children do it teach your children how to how to set a, t a table or assign dinner tasks to everybody each week and then rotate those out right 
So somebody's job might be to get water on the table for everybody. Somebody's job might be to fold the napkins or set the, set the table or help you plate the food, or maybe you swap off with who's helping you cook, whatever you can come up with, um, set a table. And then uh, search for fun dinner topics or trivia cards to liven up your table talk. So if you're worried about just staring at somebody else and not having anything to say, uh, there's two links here. Uh, my friend a couple years ago gave me this pack deck of cards and it literally, I think it's called like table topics. And you just pull one out and then it's an interesting question that you answer. And we always find that it leads to way more different conversations than what just the card is saying, but a great way to spice up your conversation at the dinner table if you're worried about that. Uh, my husband and I also have a um, rule, no phones. We set our phones down, upside down, we push them away. Even if we're only eating for 10 minutes that day, it doesn't matter, no no tech, no no TV, music is fine, no, but mm -mm, that's what we do. Uh, explore Instagram and follow chefs and food bloggers. So much inspiration can come from just seeing seeing stuff pop up on your feed. Uh, so my two favorites right now are Terry Turner's No Crumbs Left, which is the book that I showed, and then Six Vegan Sisters. Awesome, awesome uh, content. So those are my two favorites. Maybe pick one new food and master it. Uh, my current obsession is bread, which I know is um, not uh, very healthy, but my obsession is making homemade bread high protein. So I'm playing with protein powders, protein combinations. I'm just trying to figure out uh, what works. So that's what I'm doing. Before surgery, my uh, thing was sugar cookies. I mastered those super fancy, you know, that you see on Instagram, those sugar cookies I actually make. And I mastered it. it. Took me years, but uh, anyway, so that was what I did. So pick one thing and master that. Focus on the ba basics. So really think about what are the foundations of solid cooking. And really, it's like magic elixirs, it's broth, it's uh, sauces, soups, you know, uh, seasonings. So maybe you want to master a dry rub, or maybe you want to master your homemade ranch. Whatever it is. Pick something and then focus on, on the basics. Uh, the other thing that I've really been enjoying doing is I am just kind of working my way through a cookbook. So I started with this and I'm working my way through it and I absolutely love it. Not everything I've made has turned out or is great and that's fine. I take notes and then I move on. But sometimes having like 8 million cookbooks is overwhelming. So I just pick one and then I work my way through it. Uh, Oh, not should say learn, not lean, but learn the power of magic elixirs. Okay, this is what changed my life. Garlic confit. It really did change my life. This is why I started talking with Terry Turner. I can't believe I actually talked to her, but this is the recipe that has changed my life. It is the stupidest, ridiculous, most easy thing you've ever imagined in your life. You bake garlic cloves in olive oil. That's it. That's all you do. Absolutely changed my life. It's a magic elixir. And from this, you can do so many other things. And my brain just goes in so many different directions. And it like, it gets me excited. Like I just get jazzed about it, which is ridiculous because I'm not a chef. I don't enjoy cooking, but for some reason uh, I do now. Uh, and if you have the, the means, maybe invest in some new kitchen bottles, uh, new tools, pottery, nice you know, pottery made by artisans. Uh, table linen, dishes, cups, flatwares, chargers, placemats, name cards, anything that is jewelry for your kitchen, anything that's going to bring you joy back in the creation or the researching or the presentation of food, if you have the means, maybe invest in it. And all of this stuff too, you can get secondhand. I love to antique shop. I love to find great deals. You can find entire dish sets at antique shops for like no money. Great place to 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 start to look. So absolutely uh, recommend all of these things. Uh, are there any other things that you could recommend to the community to help get your mojo back in the kitchen or with food? And if you think of anything, let me know and I'll add it to the slide as well. And if you try any one of these things or if anything here sparks your interest, Give it a whirl and then let me know. Let us know if it worked for you and what, what you found, right? Just sh share with us your experience. And if you do set a fancy table, tag me in it because I want to see what your, what, your, what your table looks like. Even if it's like everyday stuff. You guys have seen some on my Instagram feed. It's just like, here's the table that I set. It isn't fancy, but it looks nice. Tag me.
so I can see it. Tag us so we can see it. I have a question, April. Yeah. What it, What is it that you love so much about the cookbook, No Crumbs Left? So I don't know if I can put, it, it's always been very difficult for me. I come from a family of like Michelin star chefs. I mean, my grandma and my great grandmother, uh, Slavic descent, German descent, Irish descent, you know, they, they like pull five things out of nowhere and make like a gourmet feast. So it's always frustrating for me because I, I'm, I, I was never excited about cooking. I'm not good at it. I burn everything. I cook things too hot. It was just, I was over it. I was done and over it. And when this cookbook came and I started thumbing through it, like I think her tagline is like recipes for everyday food made marvelous. And I was like, bullshit, everyday food made marvelous. You gotta be kidding me. There's not, nothing marvelous I made. And um, I literally started at the beginning of this book. And the very first thing that she talks about is her magic elixir. And I was like, I've never heard that before. I don't know what the hell she's talking about. And um, this actually was the very first thing in her book, marinated red, red onions. And I looked at this and I was like, this is stupid. You just put onions in a bowl and then you throw some olive oil and dried oregano and red wine vinegar. And I was like, all right, whatever. And I made it. And literally when I, the next day, when I made a sandwich with these marinated red onions, I was like transported to another universe. It was almost like an out of body experience. And I was like, what the fuck? It's just onions and olive oil. There's nothing magic about this at all. And for some reason, some connection in my brain was like, oh, that's what cooking is. <laughs> it's what, it's the stupidest thing ever. Because after I made this and I tried it, uh, I realized, oh wait, this olive oil I could use in salad dressing or a marinade. And all of a sudden my brain just, you know, you know, sometimes when you just, these ideas snap, and you're like, oh, 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 all of this is connected. For some reason, this book allowed it to happen. So then after my life-changing marinated onion experience, I went to the next page and it's garlic confit. Again, super simple. I made it. We had friends over, this is before COVID, and I literally bought baguette bread at the grocery store. I put some of this garlic confit in a bowl, like a dipping bowl with balsamic, right? Like you go to an Italian restaurant, that's what you do. My friends lost their damn minds. And it was something <laughs> that I made. And literally all of my friends were like, you made this? No, 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 bullshit, bullshit. Let me see the jar. I'm going through your bank account. There's no freaking way you made this. And I was like, no, I made it. And even my husband was like, no, she made it. And all of my friends were just, I mean, it was like, I'm a completely different person. And now everybody in my friend universe, I have a waiting list for my garlic confit. People send me mason jars. My friends come to my house, drop off mason jars. And they say, garlic confit. And if you don't, I'm going to TP your house or egg your house. I mean, they're just like insane about it. And I'm like, bitches. It's olive oil and garlic. Make it yourself, but no. So this cookbook, literally, I was just like, holy shit, this is how easy it is. I gave it to my grandma. My grandma called me. Oh my God, April. That's the best thing I've ever eaten in my life. And I'm like, uh, you're a Michelin star chef, grandma. I don't understand. So when I just started going through the rest of this cookbook, I mean, literally, I just went page by page. It is so simple. It is so easy. It is nothing fancy. Every ingredient in this book I have heard of before. It's not like some of those books and you're like, I don't even know how to pronounce that word. Nope. It's all of that. It is just like no brainer, but I, I, literally her tagline is absolutely correct. Recipes for everyday food made marvelous. I could go on and on. I mean, everything I do, this book changed my life. And she also works with a potist or a pottery artist somewhere on the East Coast. Uh, and I'm adding to my kitchen jewelry. And every time that I look at it, I make something with her pottery from this book. I just get joy that I have never experienced before when it comes to cooking. Does that answer your question? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, um, it was, uh, you became enlightened 
from her cookbook. Really, yeah. truly, it is that that's the that's the closest thing to enlightenment I have ever come to. I think, and yeah. I don't know why. I don't know why, but uh, I don't have to know why. All I have to know is that it sparked something in me that um, had never been sparked before, and I was very thankful for that. And I even told Terry that I mean I call her by her first name because we literally talk all the time now. Um, I just told her I said it's so ironic to me that food is what's saving me after surgery because it's what was killing me before surgery. And it's just so odd to me, but for some reason, surgery created a break between my old relationship with food and it, and it has allowed me to cultivate a new relationship with food. And I feel that this new relationship is what people, healthy people have and I didn't have before, and I couldn't have had it before without surgery. So that's, you know, when people always ask me like, well, what's been the biggest change? You know, what's been so different? That's what's different. It's absolutely, and I could not have explained that if I had not been through the surgery, because I just didn't know that this is what it was supposed to be like, or I just didn't know this is what a healthy relationship with food was. Um, and this cookbook, for whatever reason, uh, helped me get there. I can't that's recommend awesome. it enough. I, I know she's, and she's so personable. Uh, she's so energetic and she's so welcoming of you making your recipes your own. So a lot, of, I mean, most of these recipes are like all animal proteins. Um, I veganize, you know, I like straight Frank and vegan her recipes all the time and I send it to her and she's like, this is just freaking amazing. I'm so happy that you figured out how to do this in a way that, you know, fits with you. And she's thrilled. So, you know, it's just even more encouraging. Uh, yeah, Diana. I was wondering, um, the way you described this cookbook, that it's been so satisfying for you to use, do you think it has reached you in all aspects, as in not only the taste, but also the sight and the aromatherapy? Yeah, probably. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just, yeah, everything about it, because that is like super important, right, when it comes to food, like not only does it need to taste good, but it needs to smell good, it needs to look appealing, it needs to be bright and colorful, I think, and it needs to, it needs to be nutritious, and when all of those things come together, I think you're just way more jazzed about food and meal prep than, than you were before. Here's and I think there are a ton of books out there that will do that. For some reason, this book is just the one that did it for me. There's, um, I'll just say, if you're looking to expand your your culinary talents to, um, just like you said with garlic, you know, maybe a, a good strategy is to once a week pick one thing. Maybe you um, throw that in from uh, your online grocery order <laughs> that we're all doing mm -hmm. now, or, um, you know, like if not garlic, like fresh ginger. And then you can repurpose some of your meals. Like if you buy, you know, chicken thighs or chicken breast, you can look for maybe two recipes that involve chicken and ginger. Um, and, you know, go to the internet or go to Pinterest or something, but, you know, try something for that week that is around ginger or the next one, maybe it's, it's, um, um, you know, s s fresh parsley, just fresh parsley alone is going to brighten your dish. Um, and that's, you know, 30 cents for a bushel of parsley. Um, you know, you can really just try one thing that you've never used before. Fresh lemon, fresh lime. Um, those are easy things that you can just start your, you know, exploration while keeping it fresh and healthy and, and light and fragrant. Absolutely. Right. That, that kind of goes along with the pick one new food and master it. Yes. And if you just pick one ingredient that you want to explore more and then you find recipes that incorporate that one ingredient. Oh man. And then I think that's also a really great way to just become familiar with how in depth a single ingredient can be. Right. Because ginger is in so many different cuisines around the world. So to explore ginger in different styles would just be fascinating or yeah, any ingredient in a different style would be fascinating. Super good idea. 
awesome. Okay, anything else, you guys? Anything else on this section? Anything else to add? Okay. Again, if you try something, tag us, let us know, uh, share with us your discoveries, because the more that you share, the more that we're going to learn as well. I can't believe it. Can you believe we've already been out here an hour? Oh my gosh. Um, here's just some breakfast ideas that I came up with. Uh, I've been making BLT chicken salad. So I just use that canned chicken from Costco. And then I add in like bacon, um, pickles, uh, tomatoes. Uh, yeah, even just adding like a different sauce, totally, you know, mixes it up. Um, and then the other thing that I've been doing a lot of is tofu. I'm finding a lot of different uses from tofu. Super high protein, plant-based, um, changes, you know, and you can do tofu breakfast, lunch, dinner, dessert even. So yeah, don't be afraid to, to bust out of your, uh, bust out of your norm and, and try something new. Um, are there any go-to recipes that you really love and enjoy? Um, the thing that I found recently too is hemp seeds didn't know, or hemp part, hemp, whatever, didn't know they existed before, but then all of a sudden I started making my overnight oats with that and it just totally changed everything. That was a huge find for me. And I've also gotten into the habit if uh, my husband's like, God, I really want breakfast for dinner. Uh, we enjoy cream of wheat. Uh, I make cream of wheat with those protein shakes. Because you make cream with milk, I just use a protein shake. Tastes amazing. It's like peaches and cream, cream of wheat. And it's got all that protein in it. So super good way to get that in as well. What is okay. butt roasted chicken? <laughs> Have you ever is that the butt of can? the beer can? Okay. Yes. Yes. Yep. In my family, we call it butt roasted chicken. I, I mean, because we're ridiculous like that. But um, okay. it's, yeah, beer can chicken. Okay. basically yep and i tend to do coke coca-cola that just makes it a little bit sweeter for me uh but i have like a butt roaster i don't even know how to explain it but you literally right you just stick it on there you put the can you dump the can down below and then i pour it on top yeah but then you know we can eat off that for days and then you can use the bones to make your own stock so you know just reusing everything uh has also kind of been my my new jam for sure cool yeah and big mac salad we have big mac salad like two three times a month it's like the best salad ever tastes so good and it's so healthy we make it with our beyond burger patties and our fake cheese perfect 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 so again you guys have the link to this go through it uh yep yeah, whenever you have time to, to sit down with it Stan, go for it is there a favorite vegetable that you have that you can eat a whole bunch of and doesn't have a lot of calories? No. Um, getting in vegetables is hard for me because I just don't have a lot of space. Uh, when I do have a vegetable, it's either roasted broccoli or roasted cauliflower. That tends to be my go-to. Uh, I've been eating a lot of edamame. Uh, that's been delicious. Or spinach. Those are kind of my four big go-tos. Um, they have the most protein. I think they're very nutrient friendly. Um, and roasted broccoli and cauliflower are just as delicious to me. And I've been roasting my broccoli and garlic, or my broccoli and cauliflower with my garlic confit. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. I just had my six month checkup with my dietitian this week and she was asking me about how, how adding um, vegetables in has been going. And I was like, honestly, I don't really feel like I have any room. And she actually told me to pull back on the protein and oh, okay. start. She said, she goes, if you're feeling okay with 80 grams of protein, which I'm usually between 80 to hundred, she told me to stick at 80. And then she said, really, my goal should be a quarter cup of vegetables with every meal. But she said, you're not going to be able to start there. She's like, but I want you to start with one bite. And since I live alone, I'm like, well, I guess that means 
frozen vegetables because otherwise they'll just go bad. Yeah. And frozen, I mean, a lot of those vegetables are flash frozen and they maintain mm -hmm. all of their nutrients when they're done that way. Um, have you, do you like smoothies? Could you blend up some veggies in smoothies? Could you do it that way? Or just you want you to eat them whole? She didn't say one way or the other, but I mean, I, I do like smoothies. I haven't had a smoothie in a very long time though, but yeah, that could be some way to get it in. It could be. Um, I've been doing, I, I'm almost through my daily harvest smoothies and then I think I'm just going to start making my own because I'm home now, but I'm going to start doing um, uh, kale and spinach in my smoothies just to kind of help get it in. And I know that when we blend it, you're kind of doing the work that your body's supposed to do with that nutrient, mm -hmm. but I, I feel a little bit better at least knowing I'm getting more of it in. And I've kind of been doing what I think your doctor recommended. So like when we have big mac salad, I always try to eat all of the greens on my plate before I finish my whole burger patty. So I almost always have burger patty left, but I don't have greens left. Uh, or when I do stir fry or we do anything Asian, I pack it with so much edamame and I'm filling up on the edamame and not so much any of like the noodle or the rice, but I'm just doing like whatever the protein is and then the edamame. That at least is something green. <laughs> Yep. Yeah. It's a challenge. It's a big time challenge. It, it really is. Mm -hmm. But at least she wasn't belittling me for really not getting much, if any, in. Yeah. Yep. Well, and if we're taking our multivitamins, right, we're getting our nutrients that way. Um, so at least we're, at least we know we're covered. But I mean, the best form of nutrients that we can get are those, you know, raw, not very processed, leafy greens, vegetables, that kind of stuff. And that's just it's hard to do. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? I think that's all for the, the, I think that's all for the meal planning. Oh, here's just some meal planning ideas uh, or meal planning resources. So those two cookbooks I own, they're great. Fantastic. Of course, no crumbs left my like Bible now. And then, uh, Close up picture of uh, the planner that I use, and then the, and then just what uh, our, our meal plan for the week. Um, I do have homework for you guys though this week. I want you to share one recipe on social media. One. I don't care what it is, what you share, but tag it uh, W L S eats weight loss surgery eats, and then all of us are second piece of this homework is that we need to go online and look for the, the that tag so that we can see what other people are tagging. Does that make sense? Okay, that's my homework for you guys, tag one. And if you have any other uh, cookbooks that are go-to or recipes that you enjoy, send them to me and I'll get them in this presentation so that we've got kind of like a repository for stuff, okay? Okay, so I do have to go in 15 minutes. I'm actually having a social distant, not yard sale, but yard sale. It's because I have so much clothes to get away, to give away and the Goodwill's closed and I'm inviting people to my garage one at a time to go through stuff. So I do have to uh, prep, get set up for that. But we have two more things to, to talk about today. So do we wanna just end it here and call it good for this week? Or do we want to quickly go through the other things we're gonna talk about, which are clothes and skincare? Um, or uh, do we want to save it for our next get together? So I thought next Sunday's Easter. I just didn't know if we wanted a break from meeting. Um, so do we want to pick up again on the 19th? Do we want to pick up on the 12th? So a bunch of different questions there. So wh wh what are your thoughts? I'm open to whenever the meeting is. Okay. Kelly, Suzanne, Jason, what are your thoughts? I won't be available to attend next week. I have been quarantining so I can go see my mom next Sunday for Easter. So I won't be joining. Um, but if there's a recording, I'll gladly watch the recording if you wanted to still have a meeting. Okay. Suzanne, Jason, I, thoughts? I'm, I'm available next week. But I think for today, I think I'm good on what we've done today. I'm, I'm voting for let's just cap it right now. Okay. Uh, I'm the same way. Uh, we can cap, and then I also, uh, I'll be unavailable next week as well. Okay. So I think 
yeah, I'm super happy with what was shared today. Uh, and Kelly, I really appreciate you sharing that the family food connection, we, the hitting on that. Uh, yeah, one ingredient that might change what how I do the rest of my week too. Um, so let's, so we won't meet next week. We won't meet on the 12th. Let's just take a break. Let's be with our families. Let's, let's reconnect. Uh, but we will meet again on the 19th. Does that work good for everybody? Yes, that'll be fine. Awesome. Yep. Perfect. Good. Okay, guys. Well, thank you so much for, for, for joining me today. Thank you for sharing. I appreciate you guys as always. And, uh, and I look forward to the next time that we're together. Thank you, everybody. And thank you, April. Yep. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks, thank you. guys. Yes, thank you, everybody. Bye. Bye. See you soon. Thanks, April. Yeah, thank you. Bye, Kelly. Thank you. Bye, Suzanne. Bye, Diana. Bye-bye.